Okay, now this is where it starts to get good. This is where it gets interesting, and this is where um, many different topics that we cover all start, start to come together. So there's going to be a number of times throughout the course where you're learning definitions, you're learning basic processes, you're learning a number of thing, little details. And they're standalone, and they're things that have to be learned. And then there are times where there's something that happens, something that we have to study, and it requires that you know one, two, three, five, ten different things in order to put it together. And so uh, it will only really make sense when you put those things together. And it also makes that topic a lot more interesting because you sort of start to see how all these things actually connect in a living cell. And this is one of those topics, the topic of co-transport. So co-transport is another type of active transport. So we're still talking about active transport. We're still talking about cell membranes, transmembrane proteins, and the movement across the membrane. So we have diffusion, which we talked about first, and then active transport, which we're still talking about now. But this process of co-transport puts those two together. We're going to have diffusion and active transport happening at the exact same time. So remember, active transport is going to require energy. So energy is going to always be required for active transport. It could come from ATP. So in our example where we looked at the sodium potassium pump, an ATP was used, a phosphate was broken off, the phosphate was attached to the protein, it stays attached to the protein while it works in one direction, then it's broken off and then releases the energy so it can work in the opposite direction. And now that sodium potassium pump is going to be tied into this process as well. So in this process, what we're going to look at is the movement of glucose, the active transport of glucose. So cells in the cytoplasm have a high glucose concentration and they want more glucose. The cells are going to be using glucose for energy. So they want to take glucose molecules, bind them to a transport protein, and then push them across the membrane to an area already of high concentration just because they want more. And they need more to stay alive, right? Because they're going to be constantly using that glucose to make ATP uh, and power everything else in the cell. Things like the sodium potassium pump, for example. So that needs energy. The energy could come from ATP. But in this case, the cell is being even more efficient. What's going to happen in co-transport, this is defined as where not ATP, but diffusion, diffusion powers active transport. So diffusion is going to provide the energy. Remember, uh, I drew a little diagram that showed uh, diffusion is kind of like a ball rolling downhill. Okay? It's, going to, it's, it's giving off energy as it occurs that energy can be useful to the cell. So in this case, what we have is already a scenario set up for us. We have on the outside of the cell, right, a lot of sodium ions. And we said the sodium ions would like to diffuse back in from high to low concentration. They can't move through this protein. It it's only allows them to be pumped out, pushes them out of the cell from low to high concentration. But there could be other proteins different ones that allow the sodium to diffuse back in. And this is going to be one of them. So here's a protein, the transmembrane protein here, that's going to be a co-transport. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring in a glucose and then be looking for energy. It's going to say, what if we did this? What if we took a sodium ion, which is already in a high concentration, and then allowed it to move across the membrane to the environment where it's in low concentration? Well, that would give off energy. So in this case, what's going to happen is this protein now, with the sodium ion and the glucose attached, can change shape. So it alters its conformation. It changes its shape. Now in this particular shape, it's going to dump out the sodium ion. That's moving from high concentration to low concentration. That's diffusion. And diffusion releases energy. Now at the same time, what do we have? We also have, as the protein changed shape, as it altered its conformation, the glucose molecule. The glucose molecule now moved though from the area of low to high concentration. So the glucose molecule moved by active transport. Right? So active transport, that requires energy. Okay, so we have two things happening at the same time, co-transport. We have the transport of glucose and sodium. One of them is diffusing, 
one of them is moving by active transport. There's no ATP involved. The energy, all of it, comes from diffusion. Right? So it's sodium ions diffusing, and as they diffuse through the same protein, it's changing shape allows the movement of glucose molecules to actually be pushed or pumped across the membrane. Right? That's the idea. Now, this is just one example. There are many other examples where there's other ions, not just sodium. Uh, hydrogen ions can be used in co-transport. Uh, other types of thing, molecules can be used in co-transport. This is just one specific, very, it's a very common example. You can, you'll find it and see it in a number of places. Uh, and it's an important example because the cells um, do this. They the sodium potassium pump is very important. The sodium ion concentration is very important. Uh, and moving glucose into the cell is very important. So it's a good example to know and be familiar with. But it's not, again, it's not the only example of co-transport. It happens uh, a lot of different co-transport proteins that transport other things as well. But this is one that you should be able to take two different processes and put them together. If you think about it, though, and you can ask a couple other questions to kind of get your understanding of this and broaden it a little bit more. You could ask a question to say, if the cell didn't have ATP available, could this process still occur? So you think about it. Well, it doesn't actually use ATP. So you could say, sure, it, it could happen uh, without ATP. And that would be true up to a certain point. Okay. We have to ask, the, you know, why does it happen? Where does the energy come from? Well, it comes from sodium ions diffusing from high to low. So if we take a step back. Where do the sodium ions come from? How did they get to be in a high concentration? Well, that's the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump uses ATP. So if we ran out of ATP, the sodium potassium pump would stop, which means the concentration of sodium would be the same on both sides of the membrane. Now, the cell would probably be dead, but just for example, if it wasn't, um, concentration the same, that means there's no diffusion of sodium ions. That means this would stop. Okay. So this action of co-transport is indirectly related to the sodium potassium pump and ATP. So in a way, you could think about that one ATP. The one ATP used in the sodium potassium pump was actually moving three sodium ions, two potassium ions, and you know, indirectly a glucose molecule too. Because if we could then tie it connect it to the diffusion of sodium back into the cell, we can add in that glucose as being action that's taken based on the energy expended from that one single ATP. So this is how things sort of connect. Another topic that's connected to this, which I also want to bring up, is membrane potential. Remember, we said the sodium ions, sodium ions are diffusing across the membrane. Remember, we said the outside of the cell is has a more positive environment in terms of membrane potential and the inside of the cell is a more negative environment in terms of membrane potential right so the sodium ions as they're moving from high to low they're also moving from positive to negative so both of this both of these things work right if we look at it the other way and you ask yourself hmm okay could what about potassium could we use potassium in the same way could potassium be used to power co-transport Typically, the, the answer is typically not. Okay. The reason why is because, remember, if potassium were to try and diffuse across the membrane from high to low, it would also be moving from negative to positive, which in a way kind of cancels out the movement. So in terms of energy being released, like how much energy would be released, it's not going to be equivalent. There's a lot more energy that could potentially be released from the diffusion of sodium ions. So sodium is typically used in these cases to power co-transport. Potassium typically is not used to power co-transport because of the topic of membrane potential. So this is where all the terms start to come into play as well. If you don't know the terms, then you start start to become more and more lost. So you need to study the terms and you need to go back and review um, other lectures where the terms are, are introduced to make sure um, that you're familiar with them. The last thing with this, uh, and I just have something else to add to it, co-transport, diffusion powers active transport. I put these two terms up here, symport and antiport. They're very simple terms. Um, symport simply means the two things, in this case are two, moving across the membrane are moving in the same, sim means same, 
same direction. Okay, So they're moving, in this case, from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. The glucose is coming in. The sodium is coming in. They're moving in the same direction. That's called symport. So symport is just a type of, just a subtype of cotransport. Antiport, anti means opposite. I don't have a specific example here of antiport, um, and, and I'm not going to redo, redo this over again just to, just to show it to you, but just to give you the definition of antiport, antiport would be, for example, if instead of the sodium, let's just say, and I just said how potassium isn't used, right? but just for the sake of trying to explain the terminology, okay, antiport, if there was no membrane potential, potassium ions could diffuse out of the cell from high to low concentration, right? So in this particular case, if potassium was diffusing out like this, the energy could be released and used to do active transport and bring something in. But in that case, you still would have the same thing occurring. You would have diffusion powering active transport. But in that particular example, the movement would be in two opposite directions, right? One would be diffusing out of the cell, while the other is moving into the cell. Opposite directions. That's what we call anti-port. Still, you have diffusion, powering active transport, but they don't come in the same way. Some people um, use this term, or they see it written, uh, it might be in a book, where it says something like, the sodium carries the glucose through co-transport. And, and that, they take that literally as if the sodium ion grabs the glucose and binds it and pulls it across the membrane with it. That is, that's not at all what happens. Okay, uh, It carries it along its concentration gradient, along, along this, this sort of energy flow, um, but physically they're not attached. The glucose attaches to this transmembrane protein. The sodium attaches to the transmembrane protein. It has its own site you know, binding site to attach to. They're not attached to each other. They're separate from each other as they move through that protein and through the membrane. But the glucose does follow the sodium, say, down its concentration gradient. That's what something you will see uh, written somewhere. And that is, yeah, it's moving. It's flowing downhill like, like a waterfall, okay? And then if something is sitting on the waterfall, like a little boat, and it rides it over the edge, okay? That's kind of like the idea energetically, but in actuality, that's not that's not what's occurring. Uh, there is a protein involved, and there's very specific binding occurring. So it's not just like flowing over a waterfall. Right? But you can get the picture of it if you think that. So that's why it's typically written that way. So that's going to be the end of the uh, active transport material. So um, and and most of the membrane transport. There'll be a few other things that come up later with some other terms. Um, but now we're going to move on to other aspects of membrane function and membrane proteins, other jobs that they do.